Yo, once again, it's on. Back at you one more again, Real Kids TV in the house like motherfucking kitchen sinks. You know, I was sitting back and reflecting as I so often do. And I'm thinking about all the crazy, wild things that go on in prison. I mean, the things that people get into it about, the things that people are willing to fight over and essentially uh, a kill over in certain situations. Small things that we often take for granted out here on the streets. Telephone. Can't just pick up a cell phone in prison and, and call. I mean, certain situations you can, but that phone's going to cost you. It's going to cost you dearly. $1,000, 1500 2500 And if you get caught with it, you're going to the hole for eternity. In addition, you might get uh, extra time added on to your sentence. But if you're already doing a life sentence or you, you're doing 30, 40, 50 years at 85 percent, who cares about any extra time? But nevertheless, um, something you know, so simple that we take for granted, as I mentioned, a phone, a refrigerator. In prison, you don't have refrigerators. If you're fortunate enough, your people sending you money or you have money on your account or what have you, you can buy you a cooler. And two or three times a day, you empty the water out and put ice in it. Keeps your food, uh, you know, cool. So if you have like your burgers, your hot dogs, um, you take them out of the original packaging because coolers are only yay big. You find you maybe a potato chip bag or a Ziploc bag or something of, of that sort. You wrap it up, tie it up, put it down in your cooler. On the streets, that's unheard of. We don't use coolers to, to cool our food on the streets. Showers. You can't just get in the shower anytime you want to. And then when you do get in the shower, it's probably seven, eight, nine other dudes in the shower. So you don't have that privacy that you have here at home. So I'm sure you all get the gist of what I'm talking about. Prison is just one of those places, man, to where you have absolutely no privacy whatsoever. Now, then, before we get into uh, today's video, just understand that I am the self-proclaimed Mr. 30 Minutes or Better. Meaning that anytime I bring you uh, one of these videos, if you will, it's guaranteed to be at least 30 minutes. So if you're on your way to work, you're at work, it's just one of those days you don't feel like being there. You're dragging, your boss is getting on your nerves. Motherfucking neighbors, uh, uh, your co-workers or what have you, they stinking. Talking your head off. Or you're on your way home from work. Some days you may need to laugh. Perhaps you need to cry trying to take a nap you're trying to go to sleep at night uh, depending on whatever time you see this video well let's just say you're just in the mood to see a good old-fashioned true penitentiary story whatever the case may be this is the channel for you so with all that being said there is a message the things that i mentioned at the very beginning of this uh soliloquy if you will <laughs> People are definitely willing to fight over in prison. And it sounds so simple until you're in that situation. I was at the Rotary Farm one time. One of many times. Now, for you all that are not familiar and you never uh, viewed my video, I'm going to briefly explain to you what the Rotary Farm is, a.k.a. the fish tank. Now, if you've already heard this explanation before, simmer down. Just bear with me. Rock with me. I'll be brief. The Rotary Farm is just basically where you go. Once you get sentenced, sentenced in uh, court, you'll go back to the county jail and you'll sit in the county jail until the Rotary Farm calls for you. Sometimes it's 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Hell, I've seen people sit in the county jail six months waiting to go to the Rotary Farm. However long it takes, you go to the Rotary Farm. Once you go there, it's basically a place to where you get classified. They do a mental evaluation, physical evaluation, psychological evaluation, and they go over your charges. They look at your history and they determine what level you're going to be. Level one, two, three, four, five. At that point, once they determine your level, you'll be sent to a prison that accommodates inmates of your stature, if that makes any sense to you. Now, the Rotary Farm, you can't take anything with you. So you can have $1,000 worth of commissary. Um, none of that stuff can go. So you might as well leave it behind with the people at the county jail, or they're just going to take it once you get to the Rotary Farm. There's no sneaking anything in. You just can't take it. No hygiene stuff, nothing. Only thing they allow you to take is your stamps, your envelopes, and your letters. I mean, I'm sorry, and your, um, like a bowl and a cup. Oh, yeah, that was correct. Your letters. <laughs> That's all you can take to the Rotary Farm with you. So you essentially you're having to start all the way over once you get there. 
You don't have any deodorant. They give you some cheap state soap, cheap shampoo, uh, shaving cream, you know, things like that. But it's not worth a quarter. Once you go to your cell or your dorm, it's a hundred man dorm. It's like a big old army barracks. Now, inside of this dorm, you have a bathroom. Now, the bathroom is at the very back of the dorm. It's probably, I don't know, 60 or 70 feet. It's a nice size dorm. And your bathroom, you got probably five toilets, five sinks, four or five. Um, you got a shower that holds about 10 people. And the bathroom is kind of spacious, so people kind of hang out in the bathroom. So you got dudes, you might be sitting there using the bathroom, sitting on the toilet, you know, handling your business, and dudes in the bathroom smoking, rapping, just talking. That's just a hangout spot. Within the confines of this uh, luxurious uh, cell, if you will, it's probably about four phones. You'll be lucky if three of them work. You have one television that's mounted on the wall. You have a couple tables. They offer us 100 people in the dorm. They may offer 50 chairs. Um, and that's pretty much it. And they have a JPay machine. Now, for you all that's not familiar with a JPay machine, essentially it's just like a computer and it's on the wall. And you get on a JPay machine and instead of writing letters, which you can still write letters, but most people, you can email your people and it's 50 cents when you email them so you can buy stamps for it. So if you send them an email, you have up to 15 minutes, I believe. Uh, that's your time limit to be on JPay. And then you can't use it again for another 30 minutes and you can get back on. So you can get on there, type a letter or what have you, and... People send you letters and messages. You can get on there and check them. Also, what it offers is when people can send you pictures. So say your family, you know, they, they want to send you some pictures of them or the kids or what have you. Look on the JPay machine. Oh, man, look at my kids, man. Yeah, this is my daughter right here. I was my son. Yeah, they, right here we were in Acapulco. And right here we was in, you know, things of that uh, nature. So now that you all uh, hopefully have a picture in your mind of what the uh, sale looks like, at the Rotary Farm, you can rock with me. Visualize. Young man is on the JPay machine. He's sitting down in the chair. Because you can sit in the chair and, you know, it, it comes up to, it's probably, it's not that many feet. I don't know, maybe three feet off the ground or what have you. So you sit in the chair, you can type or whatever, you know, whatnot. And some pictures come up on the screen. You've got mail. His people have sent him some pictures of his kids. Now, the young man that I'm speaking of, he's a white gentleman. He probably at the time was maybe 30, 31, 32. Um, I'd say about 5'9". <sighs> Walked around with his shirt off all the time, so he was cut up. He had tattoos all over him. Probably weighed about 170 at, at best. Um, short hair. Cool dude, you know. Never really seen him bother anybody. So he's on the JPay machine, and you have an individual standing behind him waiting to get on the JPay machine. Now, he's not too close, but it's it's kind of a line because, as I mentioned, you can be on the machine up to 15, uh, 15 minutes. So oftentimes, when you're waiting to get on the machine, you just, you know, kind of get in line. Gentleman that's standing behind him, he's probably, I don't know, at the time, he was, I would guess, maybe 50, 48, 49, somewhere right around there. He's also a white gentleman. He stands, uh... I say he's about 5'11". I'm guessing he was about 5'11". Um, had to have weighed about 240. Had a little stomach. He didn't really have a like a, a beer belly, but, you know, he had a little stomach. And he kind of walked with a limp. He had black hair. Um, first time in the penitentiary. And so he's standing, you know, waiting to get on the JPay machine. So when the individual finishes that's ahead of him, the young white dude, the older dude says, oh, man, is that your kids, man? It's a nice-looking nice, nice looking family you got there. So the young dude, he's like, he walks past. The older dude proceeds to get on the JPay machine. I guess he was just checking to see if he had any messages or whatnot, so he's on the machine. He's not on there long. He's getting off the machine so the next person could get on. So the, the younger uh, gentleman comes up to him. He's like, hey, man. What did you? I was just thinking about something. What did you say? The older dude's like, uh, I'm lost, youngin. What, what do you mean? What did I say? He was like, man, what did you say about my family? 
So the older dude, he's baffled. He really genuinely doesn't know exactly what's going on. He was like, oh, man, I said you had a nice family, you know, nice looking kids, man, you know. So the young dude's like, man, hold on, man, you, you looking at my kids? You looking at my family, man? You peeking over my shoulder trying to look at my messages? What if I had some intimate pictures? Whoa, youngster, whoa, youngin'. It wasn't anything like that. It was just when I just happened to see. I wasn't staring at the screen or anything, but I just happened to see, you know, the JPEG. It's probably, it's larger than a computer monitor, you know, screen. So you can inadvertently look and see somebody's pictures on the screen. It's not like you have to be staring. You can just see it. So that's basically what he was trying to explain to youngster. The youngster, he's a hothead. No, no, I'm not trying to hear that. I'm not trying to hear nothing. Get to this bathroom. You hear it in prison? When you hear get to this bathroom or get your shoes on, it's time to go down, man. Really ain't too much more talking once the person invites you to the bathroom. That's what it's going to be. Oh, bro, 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 I'm not trying to go to the bathroom with you, son. You know, no disrespect, man. I told you I didn't even mean to look at your pictures. I was just trying to give you a compliment. I was not trying to say anything. So the little young dude, man, he's not trying to hear anything. Now, the reason I say young dude, I said he's about 30, 31, 32, but he's young in comparison to the OG. And I don't remember their names and I don't feel like making up names, to be honest. Respectfully. So he's, you know, uh, pleading his case, but it got to the point to where little youngster, he already got his shirt on. He walks around the cell without his shirt on all the time anyway. He think he's swole. He do a thousand push-ups a day and, uh, 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 you know, he goes through all that, man, you know. <laughs> so he's in the bathroom. He's waiting. The OG, man, he just goes and sits on his bunk, man. He's shaking his head. He's talking to his neighbors, you know, the people that sleep beside him. He's like, man, this is ridiculous, man. I don't want to fight that, that young man. Hell, I didn't know. It was an accident. Well, him sitting on the bunk, people took that as a uh, an act of weakness. You know, cooler heads in the penitentiary don't always prevail. So you got a dude that he cuts everybody's hair, man. He cuts everybody's hair. Now, this dude that cuts everybody's hair, he's a white dude. He's probably 5'11", also, probably weighs in about 220, 225. Um, hell of a barber. Um, He's a booty bandit. This dude is literally a booty bandit. And everybody knows it. And he don't try to hide it. But yet, evidently he has some respect. Because he's like, no. No, OG. Ain't going to be none of that. You're going to get back there and you're going to fight. That man's asking you to fight. You're going to get back there and fight or you're getting on the door. It's going to be one of the two. Well, he had people that was, you know, that was riding with him. That was rocking with him. Even though he's a booty bandit, that don't even matter. People was rocking with him. So they deep. It's about four or five of them. It's just OG. Man, I don't want to fight that, man. Man, you're going to fight or you're going to get on the door. Win or lose, you're going to go back there and fight or you're getting on this door. Now, see, in a situation like that, how can a person tell you that you're going to fight? You see? But in the penitentiary, it's a it's an act of weakness. You're a coward. You don't want to fight this man. He's challenging you and you don't want to fight. So you're getting on that door. Now, for you all that don't know, getting on the door means you're going to grab your stuff, take it up to the door, ring the buzzer, or bang on the glass, hey, get me out of here. But what's the problem, man? I fear for my safety. Get me on out of here. You checking out. That's basically what it means. So the old dude, man, he stands up. You could tell he really didn't want to go to the bathroom, man. So he's walking to the bathroom. The bathroom's a good, you know, 50, 60 feet away from where he was at. And he's walking, and everybody's looking. But see, the thing about prison, when there's a fight, you don't want to draw attention to the cameras because they're watching you on camera, you know, consistently. So you may look, but you're kind of, you know, looking discreetly. You know, everybody's not just gathering around like, ooh, fight, fight. No, no, it, it, it doesn't go down like that in the penitentiary. Old dude's walking back to the bathroom. So once he finally reaches the bathroom, he's still trying to uh, reason with youngster. Now I see the whole thing because I'm on the top bunk. I can see clearly exactly what's going on. Dude's woofing. The young dude, he's woofing. You staring at my pictures? And, and 
The old dude still trying to calm him down. Like, calm down, bro. It's not that big of a deal. I don't want to fight. I'm trying to go home, man. I'm trying to keep my, my clear conduct. I don't want, and I can't afford any write-ups. And young dude, man, didn't, he wasn't trying to hear none of that. He reached, he cocks back and swings. Boom. But when I say boom, he didn't connect with the old man. <laughs> boom was, he hits air. That's the only thing he hits is air. Man, when he swung, that old dude cocked back with the left hand. Boom. And I'm talking about, man, he hit that young dude so hard, man. I don't know how old you all that are that watch uh, my channel. But back in the day, it was a video game on Nintendo. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. And your character, his name was Lil Mac. And your whole goal and your whole quest was to get to Mike Tyson, to be able to fight Mike Tyson. So each boxer that you fought, you know, they started out relatively easy. And they got harder and harder and harder. Pause. Double pause. So the first boxer that you fought was Glass Joe. He was the easiest guy on the game. And everybody beat uh, Glass Joe. If you lost to Glass Joe, man, you something was wrong with you. So when Glass Joe would get hit, his legs would just, he would just, like, when he fell down, he would just shake like this and then fall to the ground. So that's how old dude, the old dude, when he hit him with that left, boom! Dude's legs was jello. Falling to the ground, man. He was shaking, he was shaking like Elvis. He falls to the ground. Once he falls to the ground, he's trying to get up. So he's grasping, he's grabbing the older gentleman, you know, by his waist, you know, trying to pull himself up. And the old dude, boom, socks him. I'm talking about, man, knock fire out of him. Hit him again. Boom, boom, boom. I can't even believe he didn't knock him out, man. I mean, the, the old dude, man, he had, like I said, he was only 5'11", but he had some big old hands, man. And everybody's sitting back kind of in amazement because whoever would have figured that this older dude, 50-year-old dude, close to it if he wasn't 50, knew how to use his hands. I mean, after all, he walked with a limp. Like, he just wouldn't, nobody would have ever anticipated him knowing how to fight. So the youngster, man, he's dazed. As I mentioned, I'm not even sure how he's not even knocked out. The old dude really could have stomped him all the way out if he really, really wanted to. Now, had the fight continued, perhaps that would have happened. But I don't really think that he would have just dogged him like that once he was on the ground. I don't know how police run in i do not to this day understand how the correctional officers knew that there was a fight going on because yeah there are cameras in the dorm in the cell but there's no cameras obviously in the bathrooms so how would you all know what's going on nobody went and told i don't know if they were watching the cameras and they seen something as far as um it, it appeared that the inmates were all staring in the bathroom but whatever the case may be they run in Police run in, it's four or five of them. They come in with a, they, their uh, a pepper spray. They walk around with pepper spray on their hips, you know, size of fire extinguishers, and they love to pepper spray people. It's really sad, man. Get on the ground, get on the ground. Now, you know, a lot of them correctional officers, man, <laughs> you know, they really think they real life police because a lot of them, that's what they uh, really wanted to be, just couldn't make the cut. Not all of them, but several of them. They wanted to really be a, a police officer. So they act as though they're really, really law enforcement when they come. Get on the ground. All suspects are apprehended. All that old funny ass uh, cop shit. And so the OG, matter of fact, both of them, they get, they immediately go to the ground on that dirty bathroom floor. They go to the ground. Land on their stomach, hands behind their back. Well, as police typically do, guess what they do? Took the pepper spray and sprayed them anyway. Same way police, you know, do you on the street <laughs> when when you're when you're laying on your stomach, hands behind your back, you might be moving, squirming a little bit, and they shoot you in your back. Oh, I fear for my life. I fear for my safety. Essentially, that's what they did, but it was pepper spray. It had no reason to, to spray those dudes. And that pepper spray in prison is not your regular pepper spray that you buy at Walmart or anything like that. It's the pepper spray that the real life police use. Oh man. It, everybody was coughing. It was terrible. So you trying to cover your face up with your blanket or with whatever you can cover your face up, man, because your eyes is running and watery and, and it's just a terrible situation whenever the pepper spray is sprayed, even if you're not the one that got sprayed. So they cuffed the dudes. They're taking them out of the cell. 
they take the OG out of the cell first. Everybody's kind of, they're looking because everybody's not really affected by the spray for whatever reason, but I am. So a couple people, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they kind of roaring a little bit. The youngster, they, when they take him out of the cell, uh, he's really messed up. He got snot coming down his nose. He got the spray running down his face. He got blood because he done been split. So they taking him out of the cell. And somebody was like, what is that smell? Y'all smell that? You can smell it. You can smell it. So they walking him out of the cell. And I looked down in the aisle. And when I look down on the ground, it's drops of feces trailing behind the dude that just got beat up, the youngster, coming down his leg. The old dude that hit him so hard that he literally, because we're on YouTube, I can't really say what I want to say, but he, you, he literally did number two on himself. And the feces was all over the floor. It was one of the grossest things that I've ever seen. And so now we're in this cell. We're, you know, uh, uh, gasping for air, you know, trying to get our breath and, and, you know, make sure that we can breathe and, and what have you. And it stinks. Well, we had to wait for the uh, biohazard team to come in and clean it up. So that takes a while because... You know, you have to put on the gear and get everything that, you know, is necessary. So they had to come in. That probably took a good 30 minutes. So we had to sit in the cell and endure that. And these are just the, the crazy things that you see in prison, man. Because the average person is sitting back thinking, why would somebody fight over some pictures? Or a J-Pay machine, uh, machine? Or a telephone? Or a shower? Or who had necks on the chessboard? Or the Scrabble game? Or the television. That's just how it goes down in prison. You got to understand. There's lions, tigers, bears, goons, gorillas. And all of the above at the rotary farm. A.K.A. the fish tank. See, once you get there, there is no separating people. So you may be there on a petty theft charge. Driving on suspended too many times. DUIs. Uh, child support. Here in the state of Kentucky, they'll give you 10, 15 years with a sentence enhancement. Uh on child support in Kentucky they will the Commonwealth and so you may be sleeping next to somebody that got 70 years you seen this individual on TV he done burned down five buildings he done got 60 70 years and you sleeping right beside him you're amongst you're in his company he's in your company every day all day long you only get one hour a day out of the cell so you're locked down 23 hours a day until they call you to go to whatever prison that they've classified you to go to. People get stressed. They can't talk to their family. Don't have no money to call. Or even if they do have money to call, people's not answering the phone. At time really starts to bother them. They look and they, man, the reality sets in of, I got 60 years. I got 30 years. People's being somewhat loud. Now, it's not really loud. Nowhere near like in the county jail. Once you get to prison, it gets very, very respectful. So them same loud youngsters is in the county jail slamming the dominoes and, and screaming and yelling. Oh, no, they get some act right in them when they get to prison. All that don't float. It don't ride. You're going to get your noodle pushed all the way backwards. All of this, a.k.a. getting your wig split. All of this will be way back here. Somebody going to split you in prison. If you come with that rah-rah and that disrespect. Now, there's so many fights that go on at the rotary farm, the hole stays full. So they're not even going to throw you in the hole. They're just going to separate you, put you in separate dorms. The next day or two, I seen the, uh, the little young dude out on, on the rec yard. And he's walking around with his head high. He's still walking around cocky with his shirt off. He kind of walked with a little swag, you know, had a little pep in his step. Eye was black. Nose was still, or lip was still busted. People was laughing at him, clowning him. Hey, man, dude. And he just, you know, he took it like a champ. <laughs> he's laughing it off. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's laughing it off. I don't see anything funny about the situation. But nobody really got stomped out. Nobody got severely injured. So I guess that was, you know, somewhat of a good thing. But it didn't even have to go down. It didn't have to go down. Everybody's respecting OG now. 
What's up, uh, OG? Yeah, I see you got them hands. That's the thing about prison, man. You get in a fight and you put on a, a display and you whoop somebody, man. Oh, man. Ultimate respect. People going to respect you. Now, that's not to say nobody. Uh, let me fix my ascot. Yeah, this is an ascot for anybody that's uh, wondering what exactly I have on. But um, in all seriousness, doesn't mean that someone won't try you. But they're going to think twice. That's why I always say in prison, people will stomp you all the way out because they putting on a, you know, a demonstration. It's a demo. So for the next individual that wants to try me, understand this is the vision that you're going to have. I've told stories before about dudes stomp, knocked all the way out. All the way out. Dude still beating them, beating them, stomping them, kicking them. You won't do it again. You won't mess with me again. Or whatever the situation is that caused me to do this to you, I bet you won't do it again. And people see that. So it's like, whoa, man, we better not mess with that dude, man. That dude's crazy, man. I mean, after all, who wants to get in a fight and get to the point to where they're knocked out and they're totally vulnerable? You're totally vulnerable. That's why you got to know how to fight, man. My partner always told me, man, R.I.P. Shy, man, Shy Town, man, He's vice lord. And he always told me, man, that you have to know how to use your hands because when you get in a fight with somebody, you don't want to be at somebody else's mercy. They decide if you uh, essentially live or unalive, become unalive. They decide if they really want to really, really, really hurt you. So you got to know how to use these hands. So for all you guys that's on your way to the penitentiary, and I wish it wasn't like that, but that's just the way that it is. Yeah, you got these guns out here on the streets, and you, you, you a big man. You a big man, you know. You a shooter. But when you hit that prison yard, that penitentiary steel, that's when your gangster's really, really gonna be tested. I know, I know. You go grab your knife. All right. Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. Maybe you can. Maybe you can't. No games being played in the penitentiary, man. Situation happened. Situation happened. Uh, and I'll briefly tell you all this. I'll give you I'll give you a bonus today. Situation happened at the Rotary Farm at the same time. Little youngster was in the cell. He was probably, and I feel bad for youngster, man. 23, 24 years old. Little white dude, man. Once again, he's probably 5'9", 5'10". Weighing in about 165, 170. He didn't know nobody. He didn't know. He didn't mean no harm. He didn't mean. Basically, what happened was you got a dude named Country. Country was a black dude. He had done time before. Country had done, you know, had kind of been in and out of the system. Not too many times, but he had been down a couple times. Country was probably about six foot, six one, 225, cut up, dark skinned black dude. He was just a country type dude quiet never said anything he didn't really talk too much at the rotary farm you're stuck in your cell but they will allow certain people to get a job now when i say certain people it's not specifics like they'll come through and say okay we need a dorm janitor make a dollar a day well a dollar a day doesn't seem like a, a lot but when you're not getting any money sent in and you work every day it's you know thirty dollars a month and it gets you out of your cell sometimes so country was a dorm janitor and he took pride in what he did. I'm talking about when he went in there and he cleaned them restrooms up, man, and he's scrubbing them toilets and the sinks and the mirrors and the, and the showers, man, he took pride in it. And you could tell that he took pride in it, but he never really said much. He didn't hear country say anything. Country used to wash clothes. As I mentioned, country didn't have anybody sending him any money. So he had to survive in the penitentiary. He would wash your clothes. Now, he's not washing boxers or anything like that, but, like, if you need your socks washed or your T-shirt or something like that, you take it to country, man, he, he's he's going to do you right as far as, you know, he's going to wash bowls. Anything that he had to do to survive. He's cleaning the bathroom, the restroom one morning. He would clean it in the morning. Then he would come back in the afternoon and, and clean the restroom once again. Just finished cleaning the restroom. He's in the restroom. He's sweating. He's, you know, he's really putting in work. Little youngster, man, he hadn't even been there very long. He comes in the restroom and country was finished. But you always, there's a courtesy. Hey, OG, you mind if I use the restroom now? Are you, are you good or you want me to wait? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. So little youngster comes in the restroom or whatever. 
Oh, G tip. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. You cool. He uses the restroom, goes over to the sink. When he goes over to the sink, he's washing his hands. Country was still in the restroom, in the bathroom. He was gathering up his supplies because he has to put everything back in the uh, mop closet. As he's on his way out of the bathroom, the youngster <laughs> spits in the sink. I mean, literally just spits in the sink. Now, after he spits in the sink, he takes the, you know, he cuts the water on and, and you know, gets the spit out of the sink. But still, he spits in the sink. Country sees that. He don't say a word. He goes over to his rack, to his bunk, grabs a sock. In prison, they give you what's called state soap. It's made by the inmates. Um, and it has no smell to it. No, it, It's terrible. It's very, very, very cheap soap, but it's very hard. Pause. Grabs a couple of them state soaps, put it, puts it in a sock. Wraps that sock around his, his wrist. Walks back to the bathroom. Youngster's still in there. He's in the mirror. You know, washing his face or whatever, getting himself together. Country grabs that sock. Boom! From behind. Splits him. I'm talking about splits him. Youngster don't even see it happen. Don't even see it coming. So as you can imagine, you get hit with something like that. You're like, oh, man, what the fuck? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh! Country grabs him by his hair because he had somewhat long hair. Grabs him by the hair, drags him over to the toilet, puts his head in the toilet. Not all the way in the toilet, but he, you know, puts his head uh, somewhat in the toilet. This is where you spit at. This is where you spit at. You don't spit in the sink. I've been in the bathroom all morning cleaning. You gonna come and disrespect me? Hits him a couple times. Eases up off of him. Let's him go. Really could have busted him up. He really could have done a number on Youngster had he chose to. So even though he knew that Youngster didn't really know what he was doing, he didn't know that that was uh, disrespectful. He'll know next time. So Country was just sending out a message. So you'd be like, well, Country, I mean, if Youngster was only 5'9", 5'10", 165, 170 pounds, Never been in prison before, but then you got country who's six foot, six one, two twenty five, two thirty, somewhere right around there. Cut up, dude. Why would he have to go get a sock and put soap in it? Why wouldn't he just fight him or just? Why wouldn't he just tell him, "Hey, young man, I mean, because we're in prison, man. You never underestimate anybody." Hell, a young dude could have been an MMA fighter that really, really knew how to use his hands. Who, who knows? You can't judge a book by its cover. So before you do anything like that, I guess country felt the need to uh, make sure that if youngster did know something, he was going to be at a terrible advantage. That state soap, man, is not, oh my God, it's, it's terrible. Now country, if he really, really wanted to hurt him, he probably would have put a lock in a sock. Or he probably just would have continued to stomp him out. He didn't. Like I said, he put his head in the toilet, you know what I'm saying, hit him a couple times, talk to him, let him know, this is where you spit at, this is where you spit, I'll kill you over something like that, don't never spit in my sink. After that, it was over with, nobody had to check out of the cell, now typically, typically I've seen situations like that and it's like, nah, we not both staying in the cell, get on that door. But I don't believe that country, as weird as it may seem, as funny as it may seem, I don't really believe country had a problem with him. He just had to teach him. See, in prison, man, there's one thing that people respect. Violence. That's the one thing that people respect is violence in prison. It's a totally different world from being out here on these streets, man. Totally different world. And when somebody challenges you, as I told in the first uh, story, when somebody challenges you, you get down gonna get down or you're gonna lay down that's just how it goes win or lose people want to see that you're gonna actually fight back and try to defend yourself now the situation with youngster and in country it was cool that i don't agree with what country did but when i say that it was cool it was cool that nothing more came out of it it didn't turn into a race war 
you know, prison, man, it's black, white, you know, you got your Mexicans, like, you know what I'm saying? So if the right people seen a black dude stomping out a little young white dude, forget the young, just a white dude in general, they're subject to jump in. Just at the Rotary Farm, I guess it just wasn't that type of party that particular morning. But it eventually went down, and it wasn't involving country. It eventually went down, and we'll discuss that at a later time. Stay out of prison, man. Stay out of prison. I know I preach it, and I say it, and I sound like a, a, a broken record, and I'm going to continue to say it. Stay out of prison because the slightest of things, the slightest of things can have you getting walked down the aisle, but not the church, though. It's not a wedding. Walked out of the cell. So you walking down the aisle, because that's essentially what it looks like from the first time you walk in the door all the way back to the back of the cell where the restroom's at. So it's like an aisle. And you don't want to be walking down that aisle cuffed up, sprayed up, bleeding, with feces running down your leg. People laughing. I done never happened to me. Oh, it can happen to you. It can happen to the best. Has happened to the best. Real Kings TV. Hopefully you like the video. Feel free to comment. Definitely share. Subscribe to the Chisana. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to hit that post notification. Anytime I bring you this action and this, this heat, guess what? You're amongst the first to receive. A couple people been telling me they haven't been getting my uh, notifications. You know, when I drop a video, just check my channel every day. Every other day. I'm constantly putting new content on the channel. I need you all to interact, engage with me. You know, comment throughout the video. Let me know what you think at, you know, particular spots of the video. Make sure you like. Make sure you share. It only takes a couple seconds to do so. That's the only way that I'm going to be able to get this channel out to the masses. The engagement with the people. Real Kins TV.